going out for brunch, going to Dandy. I'm so excited. <laughs> Getting ready to go get my hair cut. I'm gonna chop it much shorter than it is right now. I got my hair cut yesterday. This is only the first like phase of it. We're doing it in two parts so that I didn't have to spend like an entire day at the salon. So I just got the trim first. I wanted really intense layers. So it looks really weird to straighten. When you have layers, you're not really supposed to straighten your hair. And then I'm going back on Tuesday to get highlights, I guess. It's my first time dyeing my hair. I really like my natural color, so I don't want them to do anything too drastic. They're really good at giving this like natural kind of sun-kissed look to your hair. They're not going to touch my roots. I really don't want that. So I'm really excited. My hair gets really dark in the winter. On another note, I am going to show you guys a couple pieces I picked up on ThreadUp. Recently, I've been stocking up on some pieces to bring to Copenhagen. I have to be very picky because I can only bring like one big checked bag I'm gonna try to be like reborn a new person just like let my style come into itself when I'm in Copenhagen I'm gonna be leaving my house all the time So I'll have a reason to dress up just being in a different city Hopefully will give me the confidence to just dress the way I want. So yeah, it's very exciting I'm just gonna show you a couple pieces. I got I also want to thank thread up for sponsoring this video as you guys know thread up is my go-to for thrifting I love their platform. They just have so much selection. It can be a bit daunting at first and I actually made like a whole video about how I shop on ThreadUp that I'll link down below if you guys want to check that out but my biggest tip would be to shop by brand. I just always look at the brands. I know that I like their stuff which just really makes it easier to shop in my opinion. Before I begin I just want to mention that I do have a code. The code is AVA. You can use it to check out, get 35% off and free shipping on your first order with ThreadUp. So yeah I'm just going to show you a couple pieces that I got. Obviously the clothes I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing this green skirt with this black top. The green Green skirt I'm wearing is from Soft Surroundings. Next thing I got is this Liz Claiborne pink purse. ThreadUp has the best selection of purses and I've just been looking for kind of a bigger tote that is a shoulder bag but that's not so small that I can't fit like my camera and all that stuff in it. And I paid $29.99 for it which is such a great deal for a really nice leather bag. And it's pink. And I just styled these three items together with this pink starfish glass necklace. Next I got this Lauren by Ralph Lauren pullover. I got it for $31.99 which is a really good deal. It's so cute and I love just like the little preppy look with a mini skirt and this color is beautiful I always 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 look on rag and bone whenever I'm on thread up because rag and bone has the best jeans and you can just get them for such great deals on thread up so I'm always looking there and I found these high-waisted red jeans straight leg that are super long these cover my ankles which is just such a blessing whenever I'm feeling like I want to wear like just a comfy simple top
top to have that bottom elevate it is just really fun and i got these for 57.99 and usually rag and bone jeans are a lot more than that so this is such a great find next thing i want to show you is this bcbg max cesarea skirt i love how it's not straight at the bottom and it's like has a sheer covering on top and the bottom layer so it's not see-through and i got this for 54.99 and bcbg is pretty pricey also usually i love to check out their section i've always only found great things there other thing i got i got this for 9.99 it's from express a shimmery top the arms are flowy it's just a very nice fit i like like the metallic look and then i also got this halter top from express for 17.99 it's so flattering the straight like cut i love that look it's really in right now i feel like and i love this color the perfect going out top i never seem to really find tops that i like on me so it takes me a while to get my hands on good going out tops and then the last thing i want to show you is this express cardigan i put in the wash so i need to like stretch it back out this super cute zip up cardigan i got it for 17.99 which is a really good deal for wool i love zip up sweaters i wear these constantly in the winter i'm someone that gets cold super easily so i love to have a bunch of zip ups that aren't like super casual i feel like this one can be dressed up a bit more so i love that and i love the colors the red and the purple i'm so excited to bring all these to copenhagen click on the link in my description use my code ava for 35 percent off your first order and free shipping i just love how easy throw up makes it to shop secondhand it's just like such a great sustainable way of shopping now i'm gonna go do some grocery shopping i'm just gonna get to working on my florence vlog work day today I look extremely pale. I have not been outside in a hot minute. I'm gonna get my highlights done today. It's not gonna be like up to my roots or anything crazy. It'll just kind of look like my hair is in the summer.
Good morning. Going to the Ritz this morning. Henry's taking me there for our last day together. We had such a fun night last night. Went to Mano Cornudo. Excuse my accent. Best pesto pasta, like the creamiest, most delectable. And this burrata with pistachio cream under it. Both were to die for. And we saw the Aura Light show at the Basilique Notre Dame. I've lived here my entire life and it was the first time I've ever been inside that church, which is crazy. But the light show was so cool. A really fun like date idea. And yeah, so we're going to the Ritz for high tea, which is gonna be so fun. And then we're going to the Fine Arts Museum right across the street, I think. Or it's like really close by. So yeah, let's go. First time. Quel bot. Excited for French food. Andiamo. crazy because I just showered. I got these random vitamins supplements for your skin and I'm trying to finish them before I leave. When I got my haircut I went to Pink Tablon and they gifted me a couple products which is so nice of them. They always give me the best products, best recommendations. You can actually go there for a consultation and they'll tell you what products are good for your hair and all that so they gifted me this Kerastase Hyaluronic Serum for your hair and it's like caviar bubbles. All right, I've been reading quite a little bit throughout the break. I've obviously had more time, but I've also just made time for it. So I'm just gonna share the books that I have been reading over break. The first one I tackled, Sally Rooney, Beautiful World, Where Are You? Actually, Henry got me this for my birthday and I finally got to it. I actually bought this for my mom too. So I've heard about it, I've known about it for a long time. This summer, I read Normal People and I read Conversations with Friends. Gobbled them both up. I love her writing. I love how simple, straight to the point it is, but also just how complex her metaphors are. Not even complex, but like well thought out. She just has a way of painting a picture for the reader that allows you to create your own world, but also really like understand the picture that she's painting. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just love the way that she writes. And so I was really excited to start this. This is her third novel. I was talking about it with my mom and apparently Sally Rooney got like a lot of criticism on normal people and conversations with friends for not talking about politics, focusing solely on issues of friendship and love and then in this book you clearly see a shift it's a story of a very complex female friendship which is really cool to read because i feel like you don't find a lot of that in literature at least i can't remember last time i read a book that didn't just cast women against each other i feel like they were best friends in college alice and eileen they haven't seen each other in a while they both have like very different living situations and lives and they correspond through email every other chapter is an email that one is sending to the other it's only through their correspondence that we get like a first person 
person narration. The rest of the book is written in the third person omniscient, so you don't really know what's going on in their heads, except when you're reading their exchanges. I don't know if I was that much of a fan of the third person, like not knowing what the person is thinking. Like I like to know what that person is thinking. I guess you would know after in the email, but it's just different. And you could really tell in their exchanges, that's where she would kind of philosophize on life and the environment and all that stuff. It felt a little bit forced at some points. I really, really liked the ending. I was kind of scared that it would be one of those books which is kind of like doomsday -y in the sense that it's like our future is cursed and we can't do anything. It's not our responsibility because we didn't create the problem. You know, that kind of mindset or just a very negative mindset, which I find very difficult to read. I have my own stresses about the world. Like I'm not here living in this like fantasy world where I don't know about stuff going on, but I also don't really like to read books that just like harp so much on the negative. I can't stand when characters don't just go for what they want, which I guess is part of life. Like you're not always just chasing what you want and sometimes it's hard for people to get to that point. But when people don't express themselves and just say what's on their mind and just like beat around the bush and then they're unhappy, I find it so annoying to read. But at some points in this novel, I was just like, bro, communicate and like move on. I did like some of her reflections, especially on conservatism. I don't remember exactly how she put it, but something about how conservatism kind of goes against its core mission of conserving because it destroys the planet and all this stuff. And I thought that was really interesting i've never really thought of it that way it's really easy to read sally rooney's books are very much like page turners if you're looking for a quick read i would suggest that next i read lullabies for little criminals in my mini book club with henry this is basically the story of baby this 12 year old i believe the book begins when she's 12 or 11 she's in and out of foster care in and out of juvie her dad is a heroin addict he had her when he was 15 a vivid portrait of life on skid row it's based in montreal which i found really cool to read a book that is set in my own City. I think the only other book I've read that is set in Montreal was In High School by Mordecai Richler and I don't even remember it really. This is definitely a page turner. It's pretty thick but I read it in a couple days. I don't know it's weird because it's like very heavy but at the same time it's super light because the narrator is a 12 year old girl. It's her older describing her younger self in the first person. So all the metaphors are something a child would say, a comparison that a child would make. She gets influenced by older people and kind of gets lost in the world of drugs and prostitution and she's literally 12 years old so it's not the easiest subject matter it's really really good yeah we both really liked it next what i'm reading right now i'm halfway through milk fed by melissa broder she wrote the pisces which i've heard about a little bit like i've seen kind of around weird funny and filthy i think that that's so <laughs> accurate she is just very straight to the point she's a little crass sometimes but i don't know if that's the right word really but it's just like very raw it's really funny it's all about rachel she has a very intense eating disorder that is fueled in her teenagehood by her mother who is just extremely harsh on her always criticizing her and telling her not to eat things and all that stuff and she's like a 20 something year old I think 25 and her whole life revolves around when she eats food what she eats all this stuff so it's a very heavy topic and then she meets this girl Miriam who is just kind of opposite of her but exactly what she needs to get out of this dark hole she has like, very extreme mommy issues as well Ugh, I don't really know I'm obviously only halfway through and I like laugh out loud when I read it which is rare for me I adore this book so I think I'm probably gonna finish it like tonight or tomorrow and then the next book I'm planning to read before I leave to Copenhagen The Idiot by Elif Batuman. My mom got me this for my birthday over Christmas a couple years ago It's about Selin. She's the daughter of Turkish em immigrants and she is studying at Harvard and meets a boy And then they start like exchanging emails kind of love story and then school ends and they go their separate ways The contrast very starkly with Milkfed, that's for sure But it'll be a good read before I leave because it's all about encounters and starting something new traveling to budapest and hungary so yeah a little taste of europe i'll let you guys know how i find it and then i'm bringing the perks of being a wallflower to copenhagen that'll be my first book when i'm over there the rest of the day is going to be a work day i have a lot of stuff that i'm catching up on trying to finish before i leave and then tomorrow night i'm going out with my mom mila my cousin my aunt we're doing a girls night we're going to Floricado in chinatown i've been wanting to go for the longest time they make the cutest sushi Shimi platters and they put flowers on their food very beautiful food and apparently it's delicious and their drinks look really good too the next time i will see you will be in copenhagen i leave in a week but i'm just gonna take this next week to what it is cross my t's and dot my i's it's a french expression i think and in the meantime enjoy my europe chronicles i'm grinding those out right now i finished milk fed mm -hmm. 